So what are you working on today? What is your focus? What do you want to get accomplished in your freight broker business today? Not in the next seven days, not in the next two weeks or 30 days, but today, what are you looking to accomplish? What happens a lot of times is we get caught up in the paralysis of inaction. We know that we should be doing something, but we're not quite sure what we should be doing. But we know there's a whole lot of things that we should be doing, so we get overwhelmed by all there is to do and we end up not doing anything. And I think that if you knew why you were suffering from this inability to take action, then you would be able to see it and then you would start to be able to do something different moving forward. The reason why I think you're suffering from that inability to act is because you are still in employee mode. It's time now to flip that switch from employee to business owner, to entrepreneur. And we don't wait around and sit and hope that somebody's gonna tell us what to do. You see that happens on the employee side. You have supervisors, managers, who kind of dictate your day. This is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. But that's not the case on this side. We are 100% responsible for our own success. If it goes well, it's on you. If it doesn't go well, it's still on you. So you have to take total and complete responsibility for your success and we have to know what to do. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna identify some of the responsibilities of a freight broker and this is gonna go outside of moving loads because we understand that part, what we need to do about moving loads, we talk about that all the time. But as a business manager, as a CEO, we are responsible for moving a business forward, from taking it from where it is right now to growing it over time. So we wanna identify some of those responsibilities so that you can see it, and you can start to work towards it. So now let's get into the business. All right, so first let's deal with this I don't know. Now we know, we hear this all the time. Think about it when children are in school and they are asked a question by the teacher and they really don't wanna provide the answer they may know the answer, but they'll say, I don't know. I don't know. You ask them a question, I don't know. Now, they may very well know the answer, but they may not have the courage to give the answer. They may be afraid that they have, if they give the wrong answer, they be, may be ridiculed in some type of way. So they use, I don't know, to absolve themselves of responsibility, to get that responsibility off of them and put it somewhere else. So when you say, I don't know something, I'm not doing something because I don't know. We have to look at that and really examine that because let's think about it. We're not children, so we can't conduct ourselves as children. And as entrepreneurs, we want the responsibility. We are not trying to, you know, relieve ourselves of responsibility. We want to accept the responsibility of whatever it is that comes, especially as it involves our business. So we want to get rid of this idea, this response, get this response out of our vocabulary that I don't know. Because if I don't know something, now don't get me wrong, I'm not willing or unwilling to say that I don't know something. If I don't know, then of course I don't know. And if I don't know something, then I have the mind, the energy, the spirit to want to know the things that I need to know. We cannot use the excuse of I don't know as being the reason why I'm not doing the key things, the big things that I need to do in my business. Even the small things because they, of course, lead us to the bigger things. So we have to have that spirit about ourselves to say, hey, if I don't know something, I have to go out and find out what I don't know that I need to know. That's imperative. You cannot build a successful business if you don't do that. So we have to throw this thing away about I don't know. Because if you don't know, that's a good place to start knowing, to start gaining knowledge around what it is that you don't know. Because entrepreneurs know this for certain. If they don't know, they are going to try and figure it out. That's just how the cookie crumbles. That's how we get from point A to point B. That's how we advance our business is, is basically saying, I don't know now but I'm gonna make sure that I get what is necessary for me to know because it's required for me to know these things in order for me to be successful. 
And I want to reiterate this one point. I'm not saying that you should be a know-it-all and act as if you know everything because there are some things that you're not going to know. You're not going to have all of the answers. But when we don't have the answers, it's okay to admit, hey, I don't have the answer to that question, but I'll make sure that I go out and find the answer. Because as a business owner, you cannot afford to say I don't know. There's too many things that you're responsible for and just saying I don't know does not get the job done. You have to go out and figure out what it is that you don't know. So that's all I'm saying there. Not encouraging you to be a know-it-all, but I am encouraging you to be one who figures it out when you don't know something. So now we're gonna switch gears and I'm gonna show you some of the responsibilities that the freight broker has on a day in and day out basis. You see, sometimes we think that the freight broker is only focused on his core responsibility of moving loads, bringing on customers and building our freight broker business in that way. And yes, that is one of our core responsibilities, but it's not the only responsibility. You see, the freight broker wears a whole lot of different hats. And we have to understand what our responsibilities are. So I'm going to show you in this video right now some of those hats that we wear so that you are aware of what your responsibilities will be. This is not meant to overwhelm you. It's not meant to make it seem as if it's bigger than what it is. It's simply meant to inform you so that you are aware of your responsibilities. And if you don't know some of those things that you need to be doing, then you can start learning what those things are and become proficient because you don't have to be an expert at these things. You just have to know something about them. You have to know about it and be willing to learn more about it so that you can become better at it. All right. So a freight broker is a tax strategist. You don't pay thousands and thousands of dollars in taxes every year, every month, and not have some proficiency about taxes. You see, I pay Social Security, Medicare, which is called self-employment tax. I pay federal tax, state tax, quarterly tax. So you don't pay all of these different taxes. And I mean thousands and thousands of dollars, especially on quarter, quarterly tax, every quarter. You don't pay all of this money in taxes and not have a plan, not learn about the money that you're paying. And then how can I decrease the money that I'm paying in taxes? So it just makes sense that you're going to become knowledgeable about taxes. But when you first start off, you're probably going to be like me. You're not going to have a clue. Your CPA is saying all of these different terms, all of these different taxes, 15.3% on self-employment tax. And what self-employment tax is broken down into is Social Security and Medicare tax. And you don't have to pay that 15.3% if, in fact, you have an S corporation. At least you don't have to pay it on your overall earnings, you'll just pay it on your W-2 pay. So there's a lot of different things about taxes, the tax structure for your business, how that you, how of course you can get the best, you know, tax rates for the business that you're running. You're going to need to know all of this stuff. You're going to need to have some idea of how it works because yes, your CPA is going to guide you and they're going to give you information. But in order for you to understand the information, you have to go in and study that information on your own. Your CPA is not going to give you a crash course and sit you down and say, OK, this is what this means. This is what that means. Not in most cases. He doesn't have time to do that. He's going to give you the information and then he's going to expect that you are going to go in and dig down in it to understand it. I think there's a proverb that says, in all thy getting, get wisdom. So we know that wisdom is very important. But here's the other part that it says. It says, if it costs you all you have, get understanding. So it's very important that we get the knowledge, but we also need to get some understanding around the knowledge. And that's what I mean when I say you don't have to be a tax expert, but you definitely need to have some understanding about taxes. A part of the duties of a business owner, a freight broker, is being the CFO of the company. You're the chief financial officer. So all planning when it comes down to financial planning for the business goes through the chief financial officer. He'll also make decisions as it pertains to tracking and analyzing the financial strength and weaknesses of the company. So we are as CFOs overall responsible for the financial well-being, the financial health of the company. Now I want you to think about something. If you have a problem 
with managing your own personal finances, do you think that you're probably gonna have a problem when it comes down to managing your finances as a business owner? Absolutely, especially if you haven't changed your mind, changed your thinking as to how you approach finances. You see, we have to become excellent financial managers because you're not just managing our personal finances, you're also managing the business finances. And in order for the business to win, in order for the business to be successful, you have to manage the finances properly. You have to become good at managing finances. And we know that a lot of marriages fail because financial issues. So if you are not managing this business properly, then it's just a matter of time before it fails. And of course, we're talking about, about managing the finances properly. So we want to make sure that we're understanding the numbers, understanding the picture that the numbers are painting. And in order for us to do that, we have to get up and close and personal with the finances. We cannot be afraid or we shouldn't be afraid to dive into the finances, to look into it, to say, hey, there are some things that I may not know. I may not understand the profit and loss statement. I may not understand the cash flow statement right now, but I'm going to start digging into these things to get an understanding because it's simple as going and finding out, hey, kick putting into a Google cash flow statement. What is it? How does it work? Or going into YouTube and saying cash flow statement, a profit and loss statement. What is it? How does it work? Now you're starting to get some knowledge around the things that you don't know, but it is definitely something that you want to go on to want to get a skill at, and that is managing finances. And even if you don't have the skill set right now, it's definitely something that you can acquire. You see, we don't have to be the best money manager today. What I believe we have to do is to be willing to become better each and every day. Another skill that we have to acquire and become proficient at is our organization skills. You see, if you get into someone's car and stuff is everywhere, nothing is organized, then it's a very good chance that their finances are not organized. Or if you go into their house and nothing is organized, their finances are probably the same way. We wanna become supremely organized when it comes down to our business, when it comes down to how we manage the business, how we manage people. We want to become supremely organized. Now, if we're not there yet, like me, I wasn't the most organized person at a time in my life, but when I started my business, I really started to see the importance of organization. Because when you come to your desk and things are everywhere and you can't find things, or when you're trying to go into files and you can't find those files, whether those are physical files or they are electronic files, we want to have things organized in a way that you can go and put your hands on something without having to look for it and look for it, wasting time because you can't find something because you don't know where you put it. It's very important that we start to focus on organization. Get organized in your life, in your house, in your car, in your business, get organized because the more organized you are, the more and the better you're able to see your business. You can see exactly what's going on and when you can see things, then you can make an adjustment. But if you can't see it and you can't see that it's not right or you can't see that it's out of place, then it'll stay that way. But once we put this thing and we get it into focus, then we can make the adjustments that are necessary and become the organized business owner that we need to become in order to be successful. Okay, next we wanna become an investor as a business owner. You see, we are not just about making money. Our responsibility, yes, has to do with making money as business owners, but we also have to have the ability to grow money. And how do you grow money is through investing. We have to leave a certain amount of money in the business so that the business can operate efficiently, but we also have to take some of that money out of the business and put it in things that we see that are good opportunities that will allow for that money to grow. So now how do we become better investors? How do we sharpen our skill set in that arena? Well, I think it's about paying more attention to what's going on around you. For example, you have a cell phone. Everybody has a cell phone for the most part, even little children these days. So you have a Samsung like this one that I have, or let's say that you have an Apple. Now here's the problem. Everybody has phones, but most people don't invest in the phone company or the phone maker. 
You see, Apple makes phones, but they are also a great thriving company. Samsung makes phones, but they're also a great and thriving company. So if I'm gonna pay for a phone, then it just makes sense for me, whoever I'm paying for that phone through, I also should invest in that company because I must believe that Samsung is pretty good if I only buy Samsung. Or I must believe Apple is pretty good, a pretty good company, if I only buy Apple products. So if that is the case, then I should want to invest in the company. It just passed the common sense test. I don't want to just pay Apple without being able to take some of the earnings from Apple and in, by investing in the company. So we want to invest in the things that we do as a first part. And then we can start to look at other things. We can start to look at real estate. We can start to look at cryptocurrency or other investments that attract our attention. But I think it starts with first just investing in the things that you believe in, the things that you do on a day in and day out basis. You see, you pay AT&T or a phone service and AT&T is a publicly traded company. So I'm not just gonna pay AT&T without getting some of the benefits of paying AT&T. Doesn't that make sense? That's kind of like a credit card that you have cash returns on. You get paid cash for using the card. Well, I'm not encouraging credit card use, but I'm saying if you're gonna use the credit card, at least get something for using the credit card. Same way with investing. If you're going to use a company to provide you with certain products, also get paid because the company does well, because you believe in them, because you're willing to pay, pay them, and other people are willing to pay them, you should be able to get some benefit because of that. And you get that benefit by becoming an investor and reaping the benefits of ownership. Okay, so at the front of this video, I ask you a question. What are you working on today? Not tomorrow, not two months from now, but today. And the reason why I ask you that is because it's important to get focused on something. Don't try and do everything at one time. When you do that, you end up not doing much of anything. So focus on one thing and get that thing done and then move on to something else. And for those of you who wanna learn more about the freight broker business, but you want a more in-depth experience, I have a free gift for you. It's called my five video series titled How the Load Movement Process Works. How you can get it is, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. All you have to do is click on that link and then it'll take you to my website and you can register at that time for the free five video series titled How the Load Movement Process Works. Now, what is it? It's a free five video series and it's gonna show me inside of the office moving loads, talking to shippers, talking to carriers. That way you can get a really good idea of how it works before you actually come into the business. And if you want to know how we actually get the customers that we work with on a day in and day out basis, I'm going to leave a free video titled how we find shippers as freight brokers. So until the next time, I wish you the very best in all of your endeavors. See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.